you know, I guess when, after you sit for a little bit, whenever you're ready to go. You can good go. evening. Good evening. We are back for the, another episode of the book study for the 48 Laws of Power. It's the mm -hmm. Book of Man book study is I, J. Sims the Lion, and of course, none other than Doc here to give you all a little bit of information, knowledge, wisdom, or whatever we can bring to the table about this book. It's very interesting. We're starting to get into the chapters now real deep. Doc, how you feel this week, brother? Oh, man, I'm pretty good. Kind of energized today. Not as tired as I was last week. Yes, sir. No impossible things to do. Just regular things to do. <laughs> yeah. That's all right. Regular. We can handle regular. That's that. That, that impossible take a little action, especially when you start to get up there. Man, who you telling? <laughs> I was wore out, boy, but I had told myself I'm doing something impossible today. And exactly. I did it too. <laughs> That's the whole point. Still get it done. Yeah, man. So this uh this is chapter three. We're going through that. We're going oh, down yeah. the line, chapter three. Uh I believe the title of the chapter is Conceal Your Intentions. Conceal your intentions. All right. And, um, you know, before before we get into it, so um, we got the link down in the chat, in the comments. So once we get going, you got something you want to add, something you want to say, go ahead and click on that link and then you can come on with us and we can we can chop it up. We can talk about it. Don't forget to give StreamYard permission um, to use your profile so that way we can when you put a comment in there, we can see your name and your picture and stuff. Otherwise, it'll just say Facebook user. Yeah. Oh, there we Please go. Do that. Go ahead, log in, do your stream, y'all. Get that going. Also, uh, this this one of the chapters in this book. This is a this is a deep one. This kind of um yeah. this one of the ones a lot of people are gonna read or or listen to on Audible and say, I don't know. I I it is it, it, it seemed kind of <laughs> You know, this one of the unethical, ones kind of unethical, a little more, a little morally, you know, sideways. Bankrupt. <laughs> those, those are words that could be used. Mm -hmm. I, I, I yeah. want to say with this one is a very strong. Does the end justify the means? Situation. Okay. All right. Tell me more about that. Okay. Well, if I did something wrong or misleading or deceptive mm -hmm. but the result i wanted and obtained were a good and positive result for the parties involved was i wrong right you know that made me think of a story i saw today that you say that um about these three boys and they beat up their mama. Well, actually, they killed a mama boyfriend because the boyfriend had touched their um their sister. Okay. Some people say they should have went to jail. Mm. Other people say they was justified because they did what was right. And it's similar to what you're saying. I mean, I know it is not as as egregious as murder, but right. You know, you're kind of saying the same things. And, and that's, now, I'm gonna that's... tell you what. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead, man. Go ahead. I, I'm, I'm no, randing. Go ahead. Go ahead. Finish it. Go ahead. Finish what you're saying. Oh, what I was gonna say though is, to me, depends on how you look at things. What I'm discovering with this book is that it's all about how you look at it. And when you, um, in academia, when you study a thing, you you use a certain lens to look at the phenomenon with. So that means you use a certain point of view to look at the problem. For example, if you have on shades and you put the shades on, everywhere you look with the shades, going to be dark, you know? It's going to be dark. Um, so it depends on how you look at it. Right. With this, you got to look at it from a different perspective. So as we go through this, I'm probably going to offer some different perspectives and different things to this so you can look at things in a different way. Well, you, 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 absolutely. I think one of the biggest things for this uh, in this book, and it goes through it, quite often is perception yeah the, you know was i mean in, in a war in, in any war it's two sides both sides want to win both sides think they're right yeah so you know 
And victory, you know, history is told by the winners in most cases. That's true. <laughs> That's true. You know, I mean, let, 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 let's let's look at the Vietnam War. We were an invading force in that yep. war. Mm -hmm. Iraq War. We were an invading force in that war. So I'm sure the uh, natives of that place were mm -hmm. none too happy to see us there. Oh, definitely. Definitely. I mean, they did the same thing in Mexico when right. um, the United States at the Alamo, you know, right. that, during Stands that time. You know, right. they, they painted um, the, the Mexican people as the enemy when, in fact, the United Their States home. was on their land. Correct. <laughs> to call this stuff. Exactly. So it's all, I mean, it's all about the perception. Um, mm. You look right here in this country, who was right? The the, Amer the Americans that came to settle or the Native Americans, the indigenous people that were already here. That's true. That's it's true. All about perception. So mm -hmm. in this particular chapter, let's we focus in on this protection. Conceal your intentions. Yeah. What matters the most? The means in which you conceal your intentions, mm. or the goodness or lack thereof in your actual intentions. And there's two very different stories. Well, yeah. more than two, but the two first two stories they go through are, are very different. Cases in which concealing your intentions yeah. were optimal. You you're right, and also one thing I, I noticed, and I had to stop myself from thinking about the word in this way, because this will color how you think about it. Is the word deception? Mm -hmm. When you hear that word deception, you think of stuff that's dishonest, not good. I mean, if you go back in the day, a Decepticon was a deception. Those were the right. evil Transformers. So Correct. change your thinking of don't don't assign a moral value to the word deception correct just think of it as a trick or obfuscate obfuscation um to obscure what you're trying to do right that's well, all we, it is we all enjoy a, a, a good deception we go to the movies mm. and have quite a good time <laughs> enjoying a deception you know it you know it, oh. or a lot of um, a lot of the lot of the lady friends that we um we like to look at, especially on Instagram. That's a huge deception because they put on you know their makeup. They, right. You know you see them and they do contouring of the nose and stuff like that. So it's not right. a bad thing because they'll tell you you know I'm just at sitting what's here. Correct. And that's what this is. It's just it's a way to cover up what you're really trying to do. Right. So I I, I think. Do we, we have to kind of look at, okay, yes, it's a deception. Mm. What is the intent of the deception? So the first story in this chapter is about uh, Bismarck, who was a German, uh -huh. uh, ended up mm. being a German minister, political person in, in, yeah. in Germany at the time, or uh, Prussia at mm -hmm. the time. And uh, he came out and made a big speech and said a whole lot of stuff he absolutely didn't agree with. Yeah. <laughs> to save his country from mm -hmm. going too early into a war they could not win in his mind. Yeah. And he put him and by doing this he put himself in a position to actually affect how the army operated so they could later after the army was brought up to speed go into a war and win it. The same exact war. Mm -hmm. So he 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 got up there and straight told uh, lies 100 percent across the board. He was lying. <laughs> he was deceiving. <laughs> he deceived the crowd. You know, oh. and then he did it where they believed it. Oh yeah, he was good. He was, Which he is was, the end? We gonna find some stuff with that to 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 tell you how that worked. Right. But 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 check this out though. This is what what I think of. Um, you know, when I think of this story. A lot of people do this mm -hmm. when they call themselves trying to keep the peace. Right. Get in an argument with somebody, you're trying to keep the peace. Or when people say, let's agree to disagree. It's the mm -hmm. same thing. It's I, all I, deception. It, it, well, agree to disagree is, 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 is a little different to me. Because agree to okay. disagree is me saying, I respect your point, but I'm going to stick with mine. And we, I, I agree to disagree. In my opinion, is 
we're not going to agree on this. We're not going to come to the same point. You know, Let's move on. And I'm going to tell you, some people do. Most people think that. But there are some that say that just to stop the argument. Yes. That's the whole and point. Again, of and that's the deception. They want to stop it. But regardless, that, that's what they're doing. You know, that's what this man did. Oh, you yeah. know, Bismarck. He um he said this stuff stuff that wasn't true, like our politicians do all the time. To keep yep. and it was a good cause, like you said. You know, they was going into this war and um they wasn't gonna make it. Nope. So he had to he had to do what he had to do. So that yep. come back to what you said. Oh, yeah. What what I wrote, know what needs to be done and act accordingly. Correct. So like you, like you were saying earlier, deception in itself is not necessarily a bad thing. We do have a negative connotation with that word. Yep. You know, so you hear the word deception, you automatically go to, so, oh, subterfuge or something trying to, you know, you're trying to sell an idea or an image to somebody. Mm -hmm. That's not the, the truth. But it doesn't necessarily mean you're using it to harm them. Mm-hmm. And while we go, I'm get a shout out to um, Big Gus. You know, he was um, on the show. He said he can't wait to watch the recording. Um, brother, can't wait to have you back on the show again. And um, definitely where well, you can get in and chop this up with us. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We like Gus, man. Gus holding it down, doing all, <laughs> all the right things, making it happen out here. We appreciate the brothers. Hey. And we, we got to put the brothers that's doing the right thing out front. And that's, that's try to get them on Saturday. See if we oh, can yeah. get them back on Saturday. That's what the, <laughs> that's what the platform is for, man. To, to, to accentuate the brother that's out here doing the right thing. Because if you let the you let the other folks tell a story, we we ain't doing nothing. All, True all that. Was getting away. You know, <laughs> I, I, I saw a video. I've been trying to find since I saw it to send to you, but that's another mm. topic altogether. I, when I find it again, I'm, I'm gonna send it to you. You, you can tell me what you think. But, oh, uh, definitely, man. We can do that. We can do that. But, man, let's talk more about hiding these intentions, man. You know, just, I mean, I'm, I'm thinking about this. And the degree that people are willing to go to to hide their intentions. Right. And why, and like you said, sometimes it's about why you doing it. So, in this case, it was life or death. You know, it could have been hundreds or thousands of people killed. Correct. And really what he did, he just said things the opposite of what he really believed. You know yeah. what? All right. All right. I mean, I keep thinking of these examples, man. You ever you ever see people that um, you know, they have a new baby? Mhm. Mm and then they're showing the baby off. Mhm. Mm and people say, "Those some cute shoes." <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. So what they did is they said something the opposite of what they really feel. Or right. what they say, bless your heart. They don't really right. mean that. They come, So what are we getting to if people do this every day? Every day. About every little day. stuff. Well, well let, let's, let's take it to something a little bigger. How about this? So you just All got right. on a job. You got a new job. Hmm. And, you know, you you at position, you know, you 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 in this level job. You look at the person ahead of you and you like, hey, I think I can get that spot. Mm -hmm. You can't come out and tell the dude ahead of you I'm coming for your spot. <laughs> That's true. Because you, you know, he, now he's going to try to get you up out of there while he got a little more power than you. He's going to try to Fouquet you right up out of there. Hey. <laughs> All right. Hey, if you don't remember, go back. Y'all go back to the first video about Law 1 to learn yeah. about who Fouquet was and let us know if you ever been Fouquet at your job. So so, so in that particular situation, you have to conceal that intent. Mm -hmm. That your intention is to get, even, even though we all know we all trying to get and advance and yeah. make more money and move up the chain, to just come out and be like, man, I'm trying to get your job and get you up out of here. Mm. That's going to get you. That's yep. going to be, that's not going to be a good, that's a bad move. You know what? Okay. Okay. I got another one for you. Okay. Let's see if this fit. Code switching. That's deception. <laughs> code switching. As an African American, I have to be a superstar at this game. 
<laughs> code switcher. You deceiving people. Now you know if 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 your name Daquan, right? But you got a code switch and use your middle name, <laughs> so they Dang. so they give you the job. Listen, you know if I got to put D William Maxwell instead of Daquan William Maxwell, that's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> be doing it to get this job. <laughs> <laughs> the quad can't get this check, but D. Oh, William, D. Williams, D. Williams can get this check. You don't mess around with you. All they hear is me laughing. You know? <laughs> How you get a middle name of William? It don't matter what it is. No matter. That's his granddaddy name. The name. The game is middle. Game is granddaddy middle name. You know, like, like, like what, the Rufus or uh, Dolphus. Yeah, what, whatever it is. <laughs> Rufus, whatever it takes to get that job, that's who he's gonna be today. And I and you know I know what I'm saying. Hey. <laughs> Yeah, it could be. But but what we saying though is that people use deception for different purposes. And just like I said with the code switching, we were talking right. about D. William. Maybe he had to de deceive people so that he could get the job to feed his family. Right. Um, reminds me of a conversation I saw from a famous YouTuber um, who talked to women and men. You know what I'm talking about? But he was talking about people getting around in the corporate world. And mm -hmm. the one thing he said, he said, men, y'all going to have to cut your hair and stop wearing those Jordans. Yep. You can't get in with that. So what the people said they would do is that they would cut the locks off and save them. And once they get in there, good, reattach them. Okay. That's a little excessive, but I mean, you got to do what you got to do. But I'm saying that that's the same deception, the yeah. same deception. Listen, it, it's I, I I really believe is is in the end result, you know. And everybody looks at their deception mm -hmm. differently because it's it's their they feel like what they, everybody thinks their cause is just. I'll give you an example yeah. that we've all done in in this dating game, you know. All right. You run into a woman, you meet her. She got the hair in. She got the eyelashes, the nails. She got the waist trainer on. You mm -hmm. know, she got the makeup on. You meet her. She 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 looking good. She's beautiful. You take her out on some dates, you show her a good time. And then one day you see her without none of that. Yeah. Was she wrong? Yes. Uh... <laughs> hey, hey. You wrong? that's not who you that's not who you approached but, no but you, see, but you see how you're questioning that you're like oh i don't know watch this she met mm. you you was in yeah. a you was in a you was in a mercedes you had on a suit mm. you know you took her out to a few nice restaurants you know you told her you told her you were you were uh you told her you were you worked for the atlanta hawks or whatever you told her something <laughs> you know fantastic mm. you know Come to find out, you just wash cars. Hey. You wash the cars for the Atlanta Hawks, but you just wash cars. Yeah, but cars. you were <laughs> that was you know that was Trey Young Mercedes hey. Benz. <laughs> you know, but I'm gonna tell you this, bro, man. So who was we, wrong? Were, were both people wrong? Was she wrong? Was he wrong? But the deception was there. Deception but but was look there. at this. I remember, I remember now. Um, when we bought our first house, um, we were. I don't know, when I'm mid to late 20s. You know, you ain't got no money when you're in the 20s. Nope. Now, I'm a young Not man, really. you know, daughter, son, son on the way, daughter here. And we was like, yeah, we got to get a house. So, you know, when you get the house and sign up for the mortgage, right? Mm -hmm. They want your bank statements. They want to see how much money you got in the bank. Right. Now, I and, and during this time, I was a teacher, you know, in the mm -hmm. beginning stages. So right. I was probably nothing. making, I was probably making about 32. Oh yeah. You weren't making none. Yeah. About 32. Now this was about 2006, seven, something like that. But anyway, this is the deception that we did. My father-in-law, my mother-in-law said, put this check in your bank mm -hmm. and don't spend it. Don't spend none of my money. Cause you go give it right back, but put it in the bank. So when they pull the bank account, it'll look like we had more money in there than what we had. You know it, was, right. it was a deception and it was a good cause to get this young family a house, but it was still 
a deception. It was concealing our intention. Right. So the deception wasn't inherently bad hmm. because it was a good cause. Y'all did need a house. Y'all, y'all paying for the house or paying for the house. And that and that's what you're supposed to do. But they wouldn't have gave it to you, or it would have been harder for you, or you got a higher interest rate or whatever, if you yep. hadn't made that move. Um let, let me let me clarify some of this stuff for y'all. Because there is a um I'm I'm looking at the document over here, and there's something we forgot. Um, this chapter comes in two parts. Right. And this first part says use decoy objects of desire and red herrings to throw people off the scent. So that's right. everything we're talking about. Correct. It's, it's throwing people because I threw the people off the scent because I had fake money in my account. <laughs> did what you had to do, brother. You know what I'm saying? But well, we did it. So, so you know, when people see that the word deception, they're like, oh, yeah, no, nah, that's bad. And that's what I'm trying to say about this book. It's the lens at which you look at it through. Correct. But we, we can't do it like that. And all right. You know, let's shift gears a little bit. All right. Because there's another story in the beginning. Mm -hmm. And it took a little bit of me listening to it and reading it to really get what they're trying to say. Right. So, um. Nina D. Oh, I can't even pronounce that name. Anyway, it was it was this um it was this dude right back in France. He liked this lady. Mm -hmm. Oh, you talking he about the Marquis? Yeah, but yeah. but the other person um Ninon de Linclos was the person yeah. that told him what to do. Mm -hmm. So she pretty much had That's a told woman. him game. That was a woman yeah. that told him what to do. Yeah, that's true. That's true. She told him what to do. Mm -hmm. um, and he followed what she said. So she gave him the game. Right. Ignore her for a little bit. You know, act like you're doing other stuff. Get her interest in you. Right. But here is the part that messed him up. Because the plan was going good. He was killing it. All, he was getting it, man. She wanted him. It yeah. was so bad. Yeah. So she was, was checking him out, doing all of that. Trying to find so, out where he's gonna be at. So when they did it, they ended up being alone in this place. Right. And he just couldn't help it no more. Mm -hmm. Baby, I love you. <laughs> I need to be with you. I don't care nothing about all them. And he got KO'd right then. He got Fouquet from that relationship. He got <laughs> Fouquet himself. <laughs> That's what's sad. She didn't fouquet. Yeah. He fouquet himself. He did it himself. Listen, so, I'm, I'm a, <laughs> go ahead, man. Right. Go ahead. So, as a young man, I think we all have done made this. Most of us have made this mistake. You know, you're a little too excited. You get too mm -hmm. far into it, and you say more than you should yeah. to a young lady. It happens. It happens. Now, in this case, which makes his case so much worse, is he was given the game, you know, by 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 an OG of the game. The way he described this yep. lady, you know, she she knew what time it was. She was a she was a she was a big time player in this game. <laughs> Agreed to give him the game, and he was like, "No, nah. hey, hey. <laughs> he could, <laughs> I can't help it." She, she must have been fine, man. I'm telling you, I don't, I don't. Know, <laughs> she man. must have been on all cylinders. It had to be, she had to be but, doing numbers out here. But this is what I wrote down. Then I'm gonna show you one of these comments we got. Um, revealing your intentions too early mm. can ruin what you're trying to do. Right. Um, and T Man back in the house, so David, he put, Don't show your cards too early. Life is more of a poker game than chess. Yep, <laughs> you got too anxious, not enough patience, and yep. We all have done that before. We all did it. We've all done it, man. It, it's, it's not, it's not, you're not mm. part of this. I think one of the biggest but, things about this book mm. is you can apply so much of it to, yeah. to your life, mistakes That's you've true. made, and, and it's like it's like eye-opening, like wow, somebody was able to put that yeah. in words. That's what I did, That's or that's true. what happened to me, or this is this is what I did correctly, or what I did wrong. Uh -huh. Yeah. And for somebody to put it in words and make you be like, wow, I wish I had known this when I was 18. But 
But you know what though? I'm about to I'm about to throw you on. Remember I told y'all about a different perspective. Mm -hmm. All right, this is it. This is when not doing deception works against you. Um, buying cars. Mm -hmm. Now, watch. I'm about to put the game on you. Now, this is the game. This is how they do it. So you go to buy a car. Now we don't buy cars all the time. Nope. But they sell cars all the time. Right. So they know how to get folks. So you go to a car lot and you see the car you want. Now, what they tell you to do, don't let them know you like the car. That's right. what they say. Because as soon as you get in it, you know, they go and they turn the radio on and they turn it up. They do that so you can't hear the car. You mm -hmm. hear the sound system, but not the car. You know, they, they're trying to make you go a certain route because they can show you the things they want to show you. Right. But when you turn your hand over too soon and they know they got you, they ain't even got to do all that. Nope. They ain't got to work for it. And they can run you over the coals. They can run you over the coals with that. Yep. So that's when using deception is a good thing. Don't let people know what you're feeling all the time. You... you there's a time and a place. That's one of the things we go through in this book. There's a time and a place for just about everything. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you got to be heartfelt and wear your heart on your sleeve. And other times you got to hold hold everything close to your vest. And yeah. I, I really, when, when this book says conceal your intentions, that's really what he's talking about. Listen, yep. everybody does not need to know everything you're trying to do. No. Everybody, every, you know, the, all the people working around you, sometimes don't nobody needs to know but you. Nope. You get sabotaged. So Self-sabotage. Control your, conceal your intentions. And you just have to make, you have to work through that. And, and I know some people are like, oh man, I, I'm up front. I ain't got to hire from nobody. I ain't got to tell. Oh. Okay. <laughs> okay. 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 Go with that. That's a fair, that's a fair option to take. Mm -hmm. But it may not be the most successful for you. Listen to this. This is a, a quote that I wrote down not the book. Being um, where is honesty, and I wrote being honest is not always good. See, you said the same thing. Being honest is not always good. So I said honesty is a blunt instrument mm -hmm. that bloodies more than cuts. Correct. It and now that you say that. Being honest can bloody, but it can bloody you. Yeah. If you're doing it in the wrong way. Well, like you said, somebody out showing off the new baby. Is your honesty in that moment worth that person's possible friendship? Yeah. Uh, worth taking, are you, is your honesty worth that person's joy about their new baby? No. Is, is, is your honesty worth a, worth an insult in the moment? Okay, just be you can't be like your baby ugly. Right. Some babies got to grow into it. They got to grow into it. <laughs> so it's is 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 you know you walk in that line. Mm -hmm. You always walk in that line. Or when is the right time? And, and and some people you can be honest with some people, and some people you can't. Some people you can sit down and say, hey, man. Cool. You sure that's your baby? That's an ugly baby. <laughs> you know, some people you can't hey. do that with. It depends. But then, what's the motivation behind that? I never understood that. I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm going to tell you the truth. And you know what I think? A lot of people that say stuff like that, they enjoy. They enjoy what they, what they get out of folks when they say that. Okay, first off, Tact. The people, what I have found, the people who are the loudest with, I'm gonna tell you, I got to say what's on my mind. I'm gonna tell you the truth. Yes, that that's only they only say that when they can hurt somebody. Almost, I got to say what's uh -huh. on my mind. I got to tell you yep. the truth because mm -hmm. nine nine times out of ten, you can nine nine times out of hundred, you can tell somebody the truth without being rude or being mean about it. Um, that's true. Although sometimes people need to hear it bluntly. Um, 
So you kind of, and then, and then, and then the same people that's yelling, I'm gonna tell you the truth, I'm gonna tell you the truth, oftentimes tell the biggest lies too. That's true. That's true. That's true. That's I, just to I, puff I, themselves up. Yeah. What I found is everyone lies to some degree, mm -hmm. but nobody likes liars. That's true. That's true. When That's none of true. us like to be deceived, although all of us do some deceiving on some level. Yeah, I can't even front on that. Because, I mean, on some level, it might be minuscule. Right. But it still happened. You know, we talked I mean, about code switching. I mean, right. that's the biggest deceit ever. But for, for some of us, we don't have, you almost feel like you don't have a choice but yeah. to code switch because you will put yourself, you would eliminate yourself from being able to get in certain rooms that are going to propel your life forward. That's right. Unless you code switch. That's and that's a hundred percent true. That's a hundred percent true. And also, you you want you something that we're going to talk about later in this book. Code switching is a part of controlling people's perception yep. of uh -huh. you. That's right. Because that's right. You you know, language is one of those things that can be. Uh, a class separator. Yep. You know what? How well, you let's, dress, let's talk how about you a room. All of that can yeah. separate, can can you know prevent you from getting up to that next step in life. That's true. That is true, man. I'm sorry, bro. I didn't meant to try to cut you off. I had a quick thought. My Go ahead, um, bro. Oh, I know, man. But when that stuff come in my head, I had to get it out. Or I forget it. <laughs> but but what I, what I was thinking of, I got a partner, right? Mm -hmm. Who is um. At his job, he's a leader. Okay. Right? And when you see him at his job, he will have the suit and tie on every day. Right? Well, let Saturday come. <laughs> on Saturday, he reach under his bed and pull out his favorite pair of Jordans. Because mm -hmm. he got so many of them. And he will wear, you wouldn't even recognize them on the weekends. Hey, and I don't see nothing wrong with it. I don't see anything wrong. Nothing. I see that to me, that's how you're supposed to do. You nine yep. to five, Monday through Friday, you might have to be a certain person, not a different person, but a, you know, nope. a, a, a another different. version of yourself. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And that's what I want to get to with this whole deception thing. That's why I'm saying that the word deception is not bad. It's just an action. It's an action to obscure what's there so exactly all right so um there's some some other stuff let me get down to this part right here man it talks about the keys to power and mm -hmm. what that mean is just what you can do to gain this power or what people are doing to you so they can gain power and the first thing i have down is control your tongue mm. You have to control the words that's coming out of your mouth. That's to me, a this one. a lot of this book is about self control. Self control, controlling because we we can't. You know what? People love to talk about themselves. I like yes. to talk about myself. I do it all the time. Yeah. But that. All right. Long time ago, I used to work. Um, I used to work rental car. Okay. And. It was my job. Like I was the cooler. So they sent me in to get the sales up and I was selling insurance to people who um, had insurance claims. So insurance yeah. were paying their bill, but I showed, sold them our insurance. And one of the big things I would do is ask them certain questions. So they'll talk about themselves. Right. Now my goal was to get them to buy this loss damage waiver. For twelve ninety nine a day, right. My deception was that I was um. I wanted to know about their life, right. And at some but, point, at, at some degree, I did. I, I but I was able to ask them certain questions. They start talking about themselves, and they right. gave me all the ammunition I needed to sell them insurance. What, what you're talking about is another book. I think I read this in 2020. Um. Mm -hmm. How to win friends and influence people. Oh, that yep, that's on the list too. Yeah, We're talking about that one. How to win <laughs> friends and influence people, and it, and in that book it tells you 
everybody's favorite subject is themselves. Themself. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. So, and that's that's a sales tax been used for forever. It's is something of a deception. It's definitely a way of concealing your intention, at least a long term, which leads us to another story that's in this uh in this chapter about Yellow uh -huh. Kid Wow. The uh <laughs> hey, that, was, you know, con that was entertaining. In a, very entertaining. And, that was uh, entertaining. <laughs> He, he, Yellow Kid Wild is, one of, is, is, is a character that's gonna we're gonna visit over and over in this book, um, because yeah. uh, the, the guy was just very very good at what he did. He's one of the you know he's a, considered yeah. the greatest con man to ever live, uh, and that's impressive to be. I don't care what it is when you're the best yeah. at, it's impressive. You may not like what you were the best at, but it's still impressive. Yeah, but you was good at it, right? <laughs> You know, I'm not a fan what, of Hitler, but that's impressive for a man to rise from what he rose to to yeah. the world's worst ever like dictator type dude. That's an impressive that's rise. True. Not a good thing. Well, well, I'll say this though: in the book, and we hadn't gotten to that chapter yet about learning from everyone. Correct. You can learn from everyone. You don't have to apply it the same way they do, but you right. can learn from everyone. Exactly. So. So, so, but tell them about Yellow Kid Wild, do do, because well, well, the story was kind of complex, though. It, right. It was a. <laughs> That's why it worked. Know? That's why it worked. You know, yellow, he, like he said, Yellow Kid Wild. You know, he 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 scoped this dude out for a while to make sure, you know, mm. okay, what kind of con will work on him? I know he's a millionaire. I know he's bored. What can I? What can I intrigue him with to get him involved at, at the level I need to get him involved in? And that's what he did. He came presenting, he came concealing his intentions. He never told him the big payoff. He mm -hmm. told him a story. He he came to him to buy something from him. <laughs> he set him up. I mean, made it look like, <laughs> like he was the victim. <laughs> right. So he played it. That's called a long con. But it really mm -hmm. wasn't a long con. I believe they said they did all of this in a few days. Yeah, they did. And but the group at one point, go he ahead, said, go ahead. I don't want to say it yet. <laughs> no, but at one point, he says it was an eight thousand dollar deal, and yep. he says eight thousand dollars is about a hundred and fifty thousand dollars in today's money. Mm -hmm. Eight thousand dollars back then is about a hundred fifty thousand dollars in today's money. Then he says he ended up conning a man out of thirty five thousand. So, if you do the math on that, you know, that's over six hundred thousand dollars in today's money that he conned yeah. that dude out of, and that yeah. is impressive. That's you know, anytime but, you can make six hundred thousand dollars in a few days. But the way he that. closed it up, he closed it up in such a way where the dude never would come back at him. So all right, so basically they, they set up they set up the dude and they staged a fake fight. Right. They staged a fake fight, and the one of the fighters pretended like he was dead. But what was funny is Everybody was in on it. Everybody this was like some Ocean's him. Eleven stuff. <laughs> yeah, everybody but the Mark. Everybody but it, the Mark was in on it. It's it, it, it sweet. Listen, man, it, it was I. I enjoyed the story. Mm -hmm. Do I agree with conning people, tricking no. people? I don't. But one could say what you did with that bank was a con. Mm -hmm. well even more so but you know how i look at this thing it keep you from getting conned um i got something that aligns to this and i'll never forget this man remember a couple years ago when we had to evacuate mm -hmm. um for hurricanes correct so as we were her as we were evacuating for the hurricanes right um we went to um, Tennessee, went to Tennessee. So we go to Tennessee in the mountains. And uh -huh. you know they have those timeshare things, right? Correct. <laughs> timeshare go on this. Yeah. So, all right, we go to the timeshare. And you had to get on this bus. Mm -hmm. And they drive you all around zigzag roads up to the mountain. Yep. And you know when you go to the timeshare, they say, all right, we're going to give you tickets to this or that. Or we're mm -hmm. going to give you $200. Mm-hmm. I was broke. Right. But my wife, no, I hate these things. But she was like, let's do it. So listen to her. We, we went there. They go and they show you around the place. 
They said, we got jacuzzis in every room. You can see the wilderness out there. Oh, look, there's a black bear. And it was really bears. It was bears straight up walking around them. Mm-hmm. They weren't like grizzly bears, but they was like real skinny. Mm-hmm. But they was bears nonetheless. So, you know, at the end of the tour, after they show you all the cool stuff and mm-hmm. got your emotions all together. That's right. That's the job. Now it's time to talk. This lady sat me down and I said, I want to buy nothing. She said, but we showed you all the stuff. You can afford this. You can afford this. I said, ma'am, I'm a teacher. I make $32,000 a year. And I got two kids. I can't afford this. Yes, you can. (laughs) Bro, let me tell you what I did. I said, no, I can't. I tell you what. Go get that white van. Go tell them to pick me up. I meet them out front. Go call them right now. She had to bring the clothes out there to try to get me to buy. I told him he better hurry up and get the van because I'm about to burn the place down. <laughs> <laughs> but but the thing is, is the smoke screen. That's what I was right. talking about. They laid the trap. They laid the smoke screen for me. Yeah. They they laid it out. Now I'm just getting, getting blurred. My autofocus is off. There we go. Yeah. All right. They, they laid it. In the back. Yeah, I know. That's I got all this fancy junk in here. It ain't worth it. <laughs> but anyway, but it um, but that's how they do. And this is the same thing. That thing was a ripoff. Right. Timeshare is a ripoff, y'all. Leave them free Disney tickets where they at. Just pay to go in. <laughs> it ain't worth it. <laughs> Look, I'm, I'm gonna tell you my this is my thing on the timeshare. Listen, there's nothing wrong with a 199 vacation. Okay, uh-huh. you just got to go in there and know I'm about to give up three or four hours of my vacation to go in here and tell these people, no, you got to make up in your mind before you go in there, you and whoever you with, uh-huh. hey, we are not buying this. I'm going to let this guy sell me for two hours, and I'm going to shake his hand and say, have a great day. Steve. And you get that luxury <laughs> hotel room for $1.99. I, I, did it, I did it last 2020, I did that. Had but I know time. you probably did. Had a you great probably time. Did. Enjoyed myself thoroughly. Stayed in the Hilton luxury timeshare, one ninety nine mm-hmm. for the weekend. I don't think we got three nights for one ninety nine. Had us a man. Blast. Look, the, I can't do that, man. And the bubbles and all. <laughs> I can't do that because the people be making me. All right, I'm a peaceful man. I'm a patient man. <laughs> okay. But when you start telling me what I can and can't do, I don't. I'm not patient no more. I ain't peaceful no more. I'm. T- I just. That's my character flaw. I can't do it, man. The man, it. Well, that the man told me. He said, "Hey, you can afford this." I said, "I know. I don't want it. <laughs> I don't want it." You know what? I'm gonna do better. You know, I'm gonna do better. I, I'm gonna do better. I, you're right, sir. I can afford. It. I can <laughs> probably afford too. I don't want it. <laughs> hey. <laughs> hey, I can get one for me and my daughter but when she start her life, but I'm not gonna do it. Man, all right. The price is way too high. You need to I'm... cut it. I don't want it. <laughs> hey. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I can't do nothing with it. Look, I'll, I'll, I'm gonna be more like you. I'm gonna be more like the lion. I'm gonna join the lion pride. I'm gonna join the lion pride and I'm gonna listen to some timeshare people so I can stay for free and go to Disney without paying all the money that we exactly. used to pay. Hey, man, I was right. I was actually, we didn't go to Disney. We were in Orlando, though. We didn't go to Disney. We were in Orlando. We had us a good time for $1.99. You know? We had us a good old time for one ninety nine. dollars I'll do it oh, again. Oh, man. They send me an invitation. I'll do it again. So, so T-Man said me too. Me too. Exactly. <laughs> That's true. Hey. You know what? Y'all, y'all too... Man, I tell you, ooh, I'm going to work on that. I'm going to work on that. I'm going to be more patient, and I'm going to be more kind to people I, I, that that want to rip me off. <laughs> Listen, I, I I I understand the position of the person. I've done sales. I understand. Well, I told you what I did. Okay, so you should understand the position of the person sitting across from you. That's not a personal thing. They're just trying to sell you something. I, I sometimes tell you, hey, man, you know, you're really good at this job. I'm a bad customer. You're not a bad salesman. You know what? 
I'm I'm usually okay. I'm okay till they smoke screen fall off. When right. they start putting on too much pressure, yeah, that's when I book. That that be it. That be it. The last time I went, right, they were so good. They were so good. They had us. They had everybody in like a little room with a bunch of different stuff around the room, right? So of course you gravitate to the things you like and the things you know, and you have conversations about it and you talk, right? Lo and behold, the person who desk I sat down to had several of the things that we had stopped and talked and had a conversation about. They had things on their desk in connection to those. Do you think oh, that's that was coincidence? Yeah. They <laughs> set be y'all up. Stuff you like. They want to be on your team. They want to be on your side. The dude had uh, Ali pictures up there. You know I'm a big Ali fan. He had Ali uh, pictures up there. I'm like, this man, now listen to what we said in the other room. And now they in here. Yeah. He got he, he wanted to come off as a family guy. Got pictures of him and his family on trips. And so I'm like, oh, look at this boy. I love it. Hey, I, I couldn't do that but love it. <laughs> it probably wasn't even real family. Those are people that come with the pictures that you get inside the wallet. He <laughs> photoshopped himself on there. <laughs> look, listen, I, I said I love it. They, they, you know, I respect this hustle. Do your thing, young man, young lady, whoever you are. I'm just not gonna buy it. The mm-hmm. next person might fall for it, but I've done this too long. Yeah, you know, and I, I you know, so you call, you call me, you lie with you. You are very likely to get a sale. You very likely to get a sale. You call me on the phone and say, "Hey, we just want you to come and look at our extravagant vacation home. Mm-hmm. It's only going to cost you one ninety nine for uh three days or four days or for, for for four days and three nights or whatever it is. It's only going to cost you one ninety nine. You get to stay in this luxury hotel." Run it, but you got to sit through a meeting. Also, awesome. no problem. I gladly sit through your timeshare presentation. Look, look, I'm gonna tell you this, man. There's two things in this world that make me um get out of character. Mm-hmm. That's timeshares and traffic. Them two T's, timeshares and traffic. I'm you won't make the name of them. I don't know what. That's why I ain't never moved up there where y'all at. That's why I ain't never did that. Because I'm impatient. I am very impatient. <laughs> and timeshares, man, look, I can't do it. I can't do it. But you know what? I'm going to be more generous. Just okay. like this book said, that's my keys to power. But I, I can't help it because you know what? I think I've trained since I've done sales. I've trained myself to look through the smoke screens. Right. I come well prepared. So, right. for instance, if I'm if I'm buying a car or ooh, electronics, just my big thing. I'm a big old nerd. So I get electronics, and I know I didn't already study this thing. I already know what's up. I know what I want, and I go to the store to buy it. Go to Best Buy, something like that. And they trying to tell me all these features right. that make me convinced. And I already told them what I want. And when I say how much it costs, and they never tell me how much it costs, oh, that's about to make me mad. <laughs> it don't even make me mad that I know more about the product than you do, and that's your job. Right. But if you keep trying to put that smoke screen up on me, and do not tell me how much something costs. Right. You about to make me mad. That's why I be mad about timeshares and traffic. <laughs> that be it. Now they 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 are definitely uh they definitely maneuver around that how much it costs. Oh well, how much can you afford? Mm-mm. What's comfortable how for much? you? <laughs> See, that's the smoke screen right there. You that know what I you know what I it. you know what I say when they tell when they ask me that those kind of zero zero is comfortable <laughs> to me. Can you give it to me for free? Oh no, nope. right, that's something that's something that works. All right, I'm gonna start trying to enjoy it some more. I'm gonna they enjoy gotta it have some fun more. with it. Why you I'm going, I'm going, people stress you I'm out? Do. They just they just trying to do nah. a job, you just trying to go on vacation. You already on vacation, See? you already having fun, you already accomplished step one, get on the vacation. But yeah, that's true. That's true. That's true. Step that's two, true. get out of there as quick as possible so you can get back to your vacation. <laughs> but see, them two hours I got to give up. 
with some watered down orange juice and some um some chocolate chip and cookies be good hey, though. I ain't gonna lie. And I, and I do it the first morning <laughs> as early as possible. I'm getting it out of the way. Knock it out. Oh, you gonna be up seven o'clock. Seven yeah. o'clock. I want to go to the first show <laughs> on the first day. If I'm supposed, if I get in Friday night, I'm trying to go Saturday morning at 7 a.m. Let me get that free <laughs> breakfast out you. Okay. I'm excited. Yeah, for real. Oh goodness. Get that free oh, me, boy. me and the lady get the free breakfast out of them. Enjoy ourselves. See. Oh man. You know what? So now, now that you speak of that, I'm, let's look at this thing, how it applied to this, this part right here, man. Right. Um, because again, this part would be just told you. I talked about the timeshares and all that. It's titled Use Smoke Screens to Disguise Your Actions. And right. you don't have to do that, but that's we've all all gave. Um, examples just now how these people use smoke screens to right. conceal their actions like they they blind you to one thing or they, they get your attention on one thing so you can be blind to something else at the time share dude can they give you that free breakfast those warm warm cookies but they blinding you to how much they about to rip you off as oh, soon yeah. as you say yes as <laughs> soon as you say yes <laughs> rip off oh man <laughs> And, and that's part of the game. That's the part of the game. And one of the reasons why I find this yeah. book so interesting because yeah. it gives you, like you say, insights to what might be being done to you. Mm -hmm. I think more and more people need to look at this book not as, oh, this is telling me to do some things that might not be so good to do or might be deceptive or nefarious or whatever. Look at it as this is teaching me to recognize when yeah. these things are being done to me, mm -hmm. take, te 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 teach me to be able to look at people and say, oh, okay, is this person being up front with me? Are they deceiving me? Are they trying to get over on me or whatever? And not only that, how can I use the, this person's ambition or whatever they have towards yep. me to my best interest? Like, you know this, what this book says in, this book says several times that sometimes the best your, your best friend your best person you can use the most to accomplish your task is your enemy is the enemy you know i'm still reminded of the quote in the beginning of the book any man who tries to be good all the time is bound to come to ruin mm -hmm. among the great number who are not good this right. is an example of how those timeshare people are not good. They're looking to bring you to ruin. <laughs> Timeshares are evil. Do not take the bait. <laughs> uh, this is the book of man. But, I just put a camera. Okay, right, these are the opinions of the host <laughs> of the show. They are no. They, they are hey. not <laughs> the necessary <laughs> opinions <laughs> of the program. You know, let me take that back. <laughs> I take that back. He's about to say the opinions of the look. program. Anybody yeah, out yeah. there, you sell timeshares. We love you over here at the Book of Man. We, I know take it back. You know what? As a network, as a broadcast, <laughs> loves you. We understand you're trying to get your money, boo boo. By all means, hey. the opinions of the, of the individual show host you know or, or guest are not necessarily. <laughs> I, I sincerely <laughs> apologize. <laughs> I, I sincerely that. apologize. Y'all are not scam artists. And you're not trying to rip off innocent people and bait them with presents and warm cookies. It's okay. It's okay. I trust you. I believe you. I'm truly sorry for the bottom of my heart. Signed, Doc. <laughs> Timeshare people don't believe nothing he just said, okay? <laughs> you can't stand, y'all. It was real. That was real passion. That was real passion. Again, I'm not supporting or denying what he said. I'm simply saying he said it with hey. passion. That's all I'm saying. He felt it deep from a from a place deep in his core. Uh, you know, he should have you know concealed what? his intentions like the book taught him. Yeah, but, I should have. I should have. But he went out on the limb. What? He went on out there. He had. He wanted to be brutally honest. I just lost the subscribers because of what I said. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do that no more. Oh man, that's why I, I keep losing focus on this camera. The book of man. You know, make themselves by all means contact you, boy. I got one ninety nine for you. I'm not going to buy it, but I will definitely come. <laughs> one ninety nine. I will come to Tennessee for one ninety nine or ninety nine. You know, depending on how many people I'm trying to sleep. You know, 
you, you, I will definitely come and listen to your broad, listen to your presentation. I'm not buying it. Oh. oh boy. I'm not gonna but, buy anything. Hey, but look look at this, man. So the the this second part about smoke screens and disguises, right? Um, they have some keys to power now. And this is this is real. If you are an educator, you use this. Mm -hmm. The first thing said facial expressions. Yeah. That's how you create smoke screens. You know, my kids will never know how angry I really am because I smile at them. Right. I had to get down on some boys today. Oh, I went off. Right. But then I said, you know, what? I love y'all. I do. I love y'all. But I was mad. Ooh, I was hot, but my face didn't show it. And I think what you're talking about is why a lot of people say I can't work with kids. <laughs> Probably so, you know. But because see, they need they, to read this they, book. They, they, they need to read, <laughs> they need the to read book. this book, right? Because they know in that same situation they wouldn't have smiled at them. Mm -mm. They would have cussed them little jokers yeah. out. Mm. And people tell me all the time, hey, "Man, you should work with kids. Man, you you patient with kids." I say, "No, I'm patient with my kids. With my kids." You I'm, know what? That's what I am. I'm man, with my children. Your children, I might knock upside the head. Okay. You be out, <laughs> be in the unemployment line. Exactly. Get you a stimulus. One of so so look at this. So T Man still on. He said you gotta have control of your disposition and demeanor. Now exactly. I'm gonna tell you, let me tell you this. When I first start teaching, right, I don't have a te I, I, I'm not a career teacher. I, I kind of transitioned into it. So one of my mentors, man, this this was the man. He was um he was like Joe Clark. Remember Joe Clark? Oh, yeah. said, I'm Batman. And he walk around the thing. So he had that. He said, Doc, you know what? Don't come in here showing these kids your teeth. So he meant don't be smiling at them. Because mm. if you smile at them, they'll eat you up. Mm. Man, all right. So I did it. I did it. That was my smoke screen. I used to, you know, I'd be joking with kids. I'd be, you know, I'd do something like hide around the corner. And then when they walk around the corner, jump out the scam, you know, stuff like that. Because it, it helps build relationships with them. Because right. you're not just in a, an authoritarian, um, authoritative space, but, you know, you're engaging them in something that's not academic or not right. telling them what to do. Right. Um, so I tried his way, man. That job lasts about two weeks, man. Those kids were tearing me up, boy. And it was the, the school in the middle of the hood, man. They were tearing me up. I was like, I can't do this no more. So they, they I dropped I that smoke. They knew you weren't genuine. The kids exactly. knew you weren't genuine. Exactly. They knew you weren't genuine. So nothing you said really mattered, man. This dude phone, he ain't no tough guy. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah. That's it. But when I turned those around, kids in the hood seen real tough guys. Oh yeah, no, they they was real tough guys. <laughs> I would tell you no lie. I said at this one time, this this they called me on the radio. I had not been cool there, so I, they called me on the radio. Doc, come help out, man. I get around the corner. It's a kindergartner with his his hands around the assistant principal neck. Oh he no, was to, you a kindergarten? You six? Choking this grown lady out. <laughs> they was real. So the smoke screen didn't work. So they start seeing through it the same mm -hmm. way I do with the timeshare people. I right. see through their smoke screens from the beginning, just you like the kindergarten the saw through them. <laughs> I love y'all. I love y'all. <laughs> I love y'all, man. For real. I love y'all. I do. Good. I Listen. do. Matter of fact, I'm going to go to Westgate. We're going to Westgate. West, what it is on Turkey Lake Road over yeah. there in Orlando. I'm yeah, going that, that, over there. We're coming. We, we're going to Westgate, not in Garden City. We're going over there. We're going to Westgate. I don't, I don't need y'all. I can't do it no more. I got I to gotta go to Blue Green. Blue <laughs> Green, my next victim. Bro, they, they I'm me, I'm you, them. <laughs> you know, I'm going to change the way I think about it for real, for real. You but you know what to. I got to do? I got to do these keys to power. See, facial expressions. I got to watch my facial expressions. But, ooh, look at this. The other key to power is a noble gestures. Mm -hmm. So 
doing nice stuff for people is how in the world they camouflage what they're really trying to do. That's why they give y'all them cookies and they let you stay there for one ninety nine because they're trying to camouflage it because they knew they about to take all. Oh, my bad. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Listen, they, they camouflage hey. it for me. I'm camouflaging. I'm coming there like I'm about to buy something. I'm not buying. I'm sir. <laughs> Sir, but the, what the, the I suggest no you do man. is move on to the next customer. You got a chance of selling something. Mm -hmm. I'm not the dude. But look, again, it comes back to how you view it and perception yeah. and mm -hmm. concealing your intentions. They're selling you a vacation. They're selling you a vacation. But that's not they real. Well, they, 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 they want you to come and have a good time. But their real intentions mm -hmm. to sell you Exactly. Nobody, nobody doing that. But, but I look at this, um, noble gestures. When people, when, when a, a corporation or something does does things that's nice, mm -hmm. seemingly out of the blue, mm -hmm. they usually mean they up to something. So I got another thing for you. For all the teachers. Mm -hmm. Um, in the in in a certain district, they said, you know what? Here is a retention bonus, two thousand free dollars. Oh, they say just oh, for you. Probably can't trust you. Oh, no, no, no. Here you go, here you go. So they give you these two thousand dollars, and you take it. You know, it seemed like a noble gesture because you know nobody really care about teachers, but they do. Right. What's going to happen when they want you to come to school in the middle of COVID? What's going to happen when they want you to work the extra days? And when you, you feel like you can't do this no more, but you didn't took their $2,000. Right. Them noble gestures. Noble gestures. They get you. So when, when corporations and things being a little bit too nice, and I, you know what? I tell my daughter this. She getting ready to go off to college. If somebody being a little bit too nice, try to find out their motivations. Right. Find out the motivations. And that's how you cut straight to it. Find out motivations. Because it's telling you right here in this book what people do when they're trying to throw a smoke screen on you and take advantage of you in some way. It's like it is. And, and that's what people do. It's... That's why I love the information in this book. Mm -hmm. I, I'm reading this book now from the con, from the perception of, from the uh, idea of this is giving me armor. Yeah, yeah. To defend myself against a lot of these tactics. That's true. This this book is is, is strengthening me. And look, I'll admit, mm -hmm. I'm learning now that I've used a lot of these tactics unknowingly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've used some of them successfully, and I failed miserably in yeah. the use of some of them. Mostly, mm -hmm. I can say in my relationships, in my, uh -huh. in my personal relationships, I have <laughs> tried and failed, tried and succeeded, and tried and failed with a lot of these laws in this book. Uh, and I and mm -hmm. I see now how and why they are useful. Uh, I really appreciate this man for putting this stuff in in. In wording form, I realize that the more I'm I'm reading and the more I'm engaging in different things, I'm starting to able, be able to articulate or hearing someone articulate what I've been feeling for years. Mm -hmm. And it, 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 it's it's very, you know, it's, it's giving me a lot of what I would call wisdom to use to help myself in life. Um, uh -huh. and, and it's a lot of that. Being, and now that I, I'm, I'm here and I'm hearing some of the stuff in this book and I'm hearing some of the stuff, uh, you know, that's happening in the world. I'm being able to combine, combine it together, combine it together. Mm -hmm. And it's allowing me to articulate things I haven't been able to do. And these are the reasons why men in general, especially black men, need to read. Yeah. Because yeah. Um, a lot of black men have great ideas, have feelings about this, emotions about that, thoughts about this, thought about, and can't articulate it because we don't have the tools in our toolbox to yeah. do it with. Exactly. So. Men, read some of these books, man. Listen to oh, them, audio books. Oh, that's how I'm. That's how I'm going through this. Is audible. This, this is my. Oh yeah. Uh, 
Uh, 48 Laws of Power is my company on, on my ride to work. That's right. Because so, best believe now, as soon as we finish this, then we're going to hit up, um, you know, we got Will Smith on deck. Oh, we got um, Battle Cry on deck. Yep. How to Win Friends and Influence People. Um, yep. I want to do Iron John because that, that's one of my favorites. Well, um, Superior Man. Jordan Peterson, Superior Man. Bro, we about to get in. Get <laughs> And we, and we, we, and we, and we might pick up the pace doing more than one chapter a week just so you yeah. know so you guys can, can get through the book but please please follow along please yeah. start reading or listening to the book it's a valuable valuable piece of information i'm gonna be honest with you i think i've i've gotten more from this book than i've gotten from any textbook i've read yeah 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 you know this, this book as far as how to operate and how to function in life and how to look at people and things and situations. This is one of the most valuable books I've read, man. Between yeah. uh, probably Jordan Peterson's The 12 Rules for Life, The 48 yeah, Laws of too. Power, and The Way of the Superior Man. In the last year, the last year, I read all these mm. in the last year, has mm. been more valuable to me than any piece of information I've taken in. Yeah. Prior to this. And and I'll say this when I was at a point in my life, uh, probably about three years ago, no, four years ago now, where the world didn't make sense. Mm -hmm. Nothing made sense. And then when I started listening what, to what other people said and listening to their experiences and, and listening to these books, the things start to make sense. And, and I know I said this before, um, and I'll say it again, that everything is connected. And I'm going to show you how. I was talking to my dad um, the other day, went to his house, and he was telling me about a situation. Mm -hmm. And he was saying how the person should handle the situation. Now, if you don't know, my dad is a pastor of our church. He's a pastor of the church. So he's one of, he's, you know, upstanding guy like that. But the advice he gave to that person was directly out of this book. It's right. the same stuff that's in the book. So if the man of God can go by what's in the book, it's not as bad as you saying it is. Right. It's a tool. It's common wisdom. Mm -hmm. It's a tool. This book is a tool. How yeah. you use the tool is up to you. Yeah. But it's is 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 I like I liken this book to a to a gun. Yeah. It's not the gun that's bad. It's the person no. wielding the gun. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to get caught in a situation where I'm the one looking down the barrel of the gun and I don't have one. Because the conversation you know, you is different when the gun's in your uh, hand. That's right. Or you don't even know what the gun looked like. Right. You know, this book, it's dangerous fact, things out there. This book will let you know it's a gun pointed at you. This folks <laughs> yeah. walking around right now don't know it's a gun uh -huh. pointed at them. That's right. And this book will That's let you right. know it's a gun pointed at So, you know, I implore my black men, my brothers out there, and men in general, pick these books up, man. It's a lot of information. A lot of knowledge right. will help you be a better person. It's going to mm -hmm. help your professional life. going to help your personal life. It's going to help your self-confidence. Read these books, man. There's a lot of stuff out here for you. Uh, don't yeah. let don't let these days keep going by every day, sitting at the house, watching television, and not improving yourself. Yeah. Um, it's more to do than also, that, man. Everybody down in the comments section, let us know what you think about chapter three. Let us know yep. what you think about the book as a whole. Uh, any suggestion, anything that was covered in the chapter that we didn't talk about that you thought was important. Oh, it's a, it's a lot more. It's a lot more. It's a lot more. Put it in the comment section. One of us, we're gonna try to respond. Uh, if you if you're oh, interested yeah. in chat, if you're interested in talk speaking on about next week on chapter four, let us know. We get you, we send you the link, get you on stream, y'all. You can come on and talk with us. Uh we'll be back next Thursday for chapter oh, yeah. four. Uh, and four, probably four and five. We'll see. Uh we'll be back on next week. Uh follow everybody, follow us on on, on Facebook, the book book of man group. Instagram, J Sims mm -hmm. underscore the underscore lion, Doc TVR. You see it right TV there. That's him on. That's him on on Instagram. 
look, we 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 trying to. We are here. We are a men's platform. Yeah. We are here for y'all. Everybody's welcome, but we are here for men and to help men be better men. Our goal here is to strengthen the black community by making stronger and better men. So they create stronger and better families. Amen. And that's the mission statement Amen. I told you I was going to work on. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I like that, man. Yeah. Make me have to revise mine. Yo, yours is good, brother. I like I like yours, man. You, you, you inspired me to make one. That's that's my mission statement. That's part of the mission here at Book of Man. You know, hey. you know, we, we got to start somewhere and it starts with us. Hmm. That's it. Because other things need to be worked on. Yes, absolutely. Work on us first. That's right. Now I, I see you get close to sign us. One more thing I want to say before you sign us out. All right. You say this book is like your um been like armor to you yes it is it's just one problem what's that if they say you're a room for 199 your armor gonna fall off (laughs) 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 oh (laughs) watch out for them timeshares y'all don't be going over there them folks save your money don't do it but the cookies be good. <laughs> listen, don't listen to him now. Listen, if them folks tell you you can come in there and get three and four days for one ninety nine, and you stay in some luxury stuff, man, go on down there, spend them three or four days, get them folks them two hours, and you time them. <laughs> Start your clock. Don't give them no more than two hours. Two get up hours. out of there. It's time to go. They done locked hey. the door on you now. Hey, I got to go, man. <laughs> two hours. I got. I got. Yeah. I got an appointment. I got to go. I got to go get on a ride or something. Yeah. I, hey, hey, I made it by 15 them. minutes. <laughs> I made it by 15 minutes. Take your vacation. I told them to keep their money. If you can't afford to go someplace real super fancy or whatever, let them time shit people send you on an inexpensive vacation and enjoy and enjoy yourself. Take your lady with you. And y'all go have a good time, man. Don't let, okay. don't let Doc screw you. Y'all go on vacation. Y'all get away from them kids and all for a weekend. Hey. Re- rejuvenate hey. yourself. Oh, hey. Oh. One ninety nine. You can spare two hundred dollars. Don't eat out this week. Don't eat out this month. Oh, don't boy. eat out this month. Save them two hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. Go have a good time. Get y'all a couple of bottles. Let's go 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 lay in a jacuzzi for a few nights. <laughs> okay. One ninety nine. That's what we did. We was up in the jacuzzi with the bubbles and everything. The jets. The water mm-hmm. jets. I'm gonna try it. I'm, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna be good. I'm gonna be good, man. No lie. Don't let them folks good. ruin your weekend. It's two hours, Doc. Let them folks ruin your whole weekend. You there Friday, Saturday, Sunday. You gonna let two hours ruin your weekend? I told you, man. I told you. I'm usually patient and nice, except with traffic <laughs> and time shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's your equipment, man. That's your I can't equipment. do it. Traffic and I'm, time shares is your equipment. I'm normally a God fearing man. <laughs> Y'all won't even hear me. Y'all will ever hear me cuss ever. You won't traffic. hear me cuss during that time either. But traffic and time shares, I be doggone close. <laughs> oh, man. Anyway, man, go and take us out of here, bro. Hey, man, thank y'all for joining us, man. Hey, watch the watch the recording, mm. and uh, like I said, get down in the comment section. Let us know how we doing. Uh, yes, this has been the Book of Man Book Study every Thursday at seven. We're doing the 48 Laws of Power and so on, the other books as the year go on. We love y'all. Thank you for joining us. We out. Later.